Hello, yes, and uh, welcome to another edition of the Irish Abroad Show with myself, Gerard Brown. We're delighted this week to be joined by Gary Spade, of course. Paul Tierney is away on holidays for the week, so we had to get a, a reliable step in and no better man than yourself. Gary, will I be correct in saying this is your debut on the show? It is, yeah, my first time on the show. I know yourself and Paul have done a fantastic job on it, but um, I hope he's off enjoying his holidays. But um, yeah, it's my first time on. Yeah, uh, we have had Paul Nealon as well step in a few times as well. So we've been spreading it around a nice bit over the last kind of couple of weeks. So it's good to get yourself on board as well. So still a busy enough week, obviously, gone by, I suppose. I know there was no double game weeks in EFL or any European action, but we did see, obviously, there was League Cup fourth round ties over the week. Obviously, the, the weekend action as well. And we'll start with the Premier League from there. And Andrew Omobamdedi had the last 22 minutes of Norwich's 7 0 defeat away to Chelsea. Norwich were the time when he was introduced after, of course, Ben Gibson had been sent off. And he is possibly now likely to see more game time this weekend for the game against Leeds with Gibson suspended. Nathan Collins got another 90 minutes under his belt as Burnley drew 2 2 away to Southampton. Uh, Lang Sly is giving him a 7 out of 10 rating, saying, not quite as eye-catching as his previous two outings, but another steady showing from the Irishman. Seamus Coleman was part of the Everton team that collapsed in the last 12 minutes of their game against Watford at Goodison Park. They were leading 2-1 until them last couple of minutes and went on to concede four goals to lose 5-2. The Liverpool World gave him a 4 out of 10 rating, but not many Everton players came away much with much uh, reviews, or certainly in a way of good reviews from that one. And then finally from the Premier League, Kieran Clark, but the entire game as Newcastle drew 1-1 with Crystal Palace. They're still searching for that first win at Selhurst Park. The Chronicle Live gave him a 6 out of 10 rating, but were quite critical of him for Christian Benteke's goal. So looking through there, Gary, I suppose the biggest thing that stands out, once again, obviously a lot of defenders playing, but I just take it to myself, there's, there's three teams in the Premier League that are still yet to win, and there's Irish involvement in all three of them. Yeah, I know. It's... Um... And I, I think they're all they're all going to be in the relegation battle, but in many of the ways, Jar, that's where we're going to be. Um, I, I, I was delighted to see Androma Vamadeli get some game time because he, he obviously did at the start, and then he lost out to your Liverpool Turkish mate that they signed as a Quebec or whatever. Back, yeah. But um, uh, and obviously, I mean, he only he only got got on the pitch because. Um, as you said, the guy the guy was sent off, but obviously there's a ban coming, and that was a, a bad challenge as well. Oh no, it was a second yellow, wasn't it? It was, it was a bad yeah, challenge. I think it was just yeah. a second yellow. So I was going to say he's only going to get one match, but hopefully, I mean, I, I'm sure Andrew Obamadeli will start next time out, and may, maybe if he just puts a performance in, he'll be able to keep his place because, uh, frankly, the Norwich defence was a shambles uh, in that game. And uh, the only one I thought that came out of it with any credit was Grant Handley, and uh, Andrew did Andrew did well enough when he came on. Uh, he certainly looked uh, better than what had gone before him because they they were good. they got a total pasting, and uh, so definitely, um, if he gets a chance and he gets a, a run in the team, then then why not? Um, I'm sure the manager is going to be looking at changes after that performance anyway. Uh, Nathan Collins is really, really impressing. And uh, that's great to see. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be in a, in a relegation battle, but it's good to see him starting regularly in the Premier League. And Kieran Clark is someone we've talked about before. He's a regular starter for Newcastle. And uh, he's he's not getting near our squad. So we, we do complain about not having too many players in the Premier League anymore, but then... Uh, we can't afford to leave a, a Premier League regular at home, but I think that's more an indication that our strength, as you say, is in our defence as opposed to um, throughout the field. I think if we had a Premier League regular in attack, I'm sure he'd be um, first choice for us. Yeah, so two other maybe interesting things from the weekend. Very, very surprising Shane, Shane Duffy wasn't in the Brighton team for their game against Man City, considering his start of the season. Now, maybe... It was a blessing in disguise in some ways because City tore Brighton asunder in that first half. I think it ends up 3-1 in the end. And Jeff Hendrick, because he came on for Newcastle for the injured Joe Willock in their last game for the international break at the start of the month. Done quite well, got a goal. Goes off in the international break and has a positive couple of games, you would say, for Ireland. But that's now two games in a row where he's been an unused substitute. Yeah, no, they, I, I, my understanding of the Brighton one is it, it was tactical. 
that the, he went to a back four and Shane was the one to lose out. And yeah, if he was going to miss a game, I think it was a good one to miss. Uh, maybe, okay, Brighton were torn apart a bit and conceded quite a few goals. Uh, from I only saw the highlights. I didn't actually get to see the game live, but they did actually seem to have a real go at City. Maybe a bit naive out of them. Um, Graham Potter, he does like to play attractive football, but they did really have a go, but City just picked them apart. I think maybe they'd have been better off to have sat in with the five at the three at the back and the the, the low block or whatever. They might have had a better, but it's easy with hindsight to say that. But um, and I know they did beat City last season, so maybe there was some uh, some of that thinking going on. But yeah, it was. Um, and Shane did get his place back for midweek for the EFL Cup, so hopefully that was just uh, um, a tactical system for one game that uh, we'll, we'll see him get, get back and, and start regularly again. Yeah, Jeff Hendrick, um, well, you see, the, there's a new manager in play now as well, at New, well, a, a temporary manager in play at Newcastle, where we're waiting for a new manager. So that's always a concern for... It's it's a good thing if you have an Irish player that's not getting his, his game because the new manager can come in and, and maybe change things up. But if you have somebody like Jeff Hendrick who's getting quite a bit of game time, uh, under Steve Bruce, then then things obviously can change. So th- that is probably a bit of a concern. And obviously, as I said, uh, I'm talking about strikers. If we had someone regular in the Premier League, it goes for a midfielder as well. That um, it would be great to see Jeff get regular game time in in the Premier League, even if it is in a in a relegation battle. <clears throat> but the issue is, and I think it's going to happen, is Newcastle. They're going to obviously they've got this massive money coming in uh, from Saudi Arabia. Now they're obviously going to go for a big name manager and probably quite a number of big name signings in January as well. Yeah. I think just the most frustrating thing with Jeff Hendrick's situation is after finally putting a couple of really good consistent performance for Ireland, he hasn't maybe got that chance to kind of build on and kick on kind of a couple of weeks, but there's no two ways. Well, I still think it'd be very much as part of Stephen Kenny's plans for the game against Portugal in a fortnight's time. We'll move on down down to the divisions and we'll move on to the championship and always there's so much to get through in this league. Mark Collins and or sorry, Mark McGuinness and James Collins both played for Cardiff as they suffered their eighth straight defeat, losing two 0 home to Middlesbrough. Um, no surprise that obviously after the game Mick McCarthy left the club by mutual consent. McGuinness also picked up a yellow card in this game and both players received a three out of ten rating from Wales online. So it's been a tough, tough couple of weeks for the South Wales club there. Michael Obafemi scored his first goal for Swansea City, but it was only a consolation as they lost 2-1 to Birmingham City. Uh, Ryan Manning provided the assist for that goal. Uh, Manning got a 6 out of 10 rating from Wales Online, while Obafemi got a 7 out of 10 rating. Scott Hogan also played in this game for Birmingham, and he got a 6.5 rating from the Birmingham Mail. Jason Manumby played the full 90 minutes, and Callum Robinson came off the last 29 as West Brom continued their winning ways with a 3-0 victory at home against Bristol City. Uh, Malumbi as well was actually given the highest rating um, by any West Brom player in the Birmingham Mail with an 8 out of 10 uh, rating, saying picked up the play from the halfway line on occasions after high pressing to retrieve the ball and had no issues. Robinson uh, only had a 4 out of 10 rating for his cameo appearance and didn't really kind of get into the game by all accounts. And Callum Adauda, was introduced in the 64th minute in this game for Bristol City as he continues his return from recovery. Sammy Smedix and Jack Taylor both played 90 minutes and Connor Coventry came on to substitute as Peter Bar made a back-to-back wins, beating QPR 2-1 on Saturday. Uh, Taylor and... Sorry, you're just sorting out the pages there, sorry. Uh, Taylor and Smith both getting a 8.5 uh, rating, while Conor Coventry got a 7 out of 10 rating for his showing. Dan McNamara came on for the last 8 minutes of Millwall's 2-1 victory over Stoke City. Glenn Ray played the full 90 minutes as Luton Town extended their unbeaten run to 5 games with a 1-0 home victory over Hull City. Veste Ebizede, or, Eb- or El Bosel, uh, played 62 minutes as Derby County became the first side to take points off Coventry City at home this season with a 1-1 draw. Um, had got a 5 out of 10 rating there from the Derby Telegraph saying he had a quiet first half, which probably led to him getting an early dismissal in the second half. 
Mark Travers and Gavin Kilkenny both continued their fine form as Bournemouth eased their way to a 3 0 victory over Huddersfield. It's a third straight clean sheet for Travers. Kilkenny picked up a yellow card in this game, but overall, in general, didn't overly affect his performance as both players got 8 out of 10 rating from Dorset's live. As Bournemouth at the moment looked like certainty to get promoted to the Premier League. Uh, Alan Brown was sent off and Sean Maguire picked up a yellow card as Preston lost 2 0 to local right on Saturday. Richard Keogh also lined out in this game um, for Blackpool and he got strong reactions from the Blackpool Gazette saying that um, the Preston never really looked like they were going to be able to get behind him and even though he had his hands full, he kept them, the Preston attack quiet with an 8 out of 10 rating. Uh, Daryl Lenehan uh, captain Blackburn to a 2-0 victory over Reading uh, with Langside giving him an 8 out of 10 rating. And finally... John Egan and Ender Stevens both played 90 minutes and Dave McGoldrick came on as a second half substitute as Sheffield United uh, won a high scoring South Yorkshire Derby against Barnsley winning 3-2 and all three players received a 6 out of 10 rating from the Star, a local publication in Sheffield. As you can see there Gary, so much to kind of get through. Overall, for me, the probably biggest thing standing out is continuing stock rising for Mark Travers and Gavin Kilkenny and finally after a frustrating start to his spell at West Brom, it's now getting a good run of games for Jason Malumby and seems to be really impressing. Yeah, I mean, I, I will go to Jason Malumby because I've always been a fan of him. And uh, I, I was really, really impressed with his Irish performances. I couldn't understand why he wasn't getting a chance at Brighton. Then he gets the loan to Preston. I said, great, he's going to start and, and star. And, and he didn't. And it's uh, it's great to see him. And I mean, West Brom is a really high level because they're one of these, at this point, a yo-yo club that's, up and down between the lower reaches of the Premier League and the Championship. So great to see him get the star rating, etc. And uh, I believe he's going to be a big player for us for years to come and someone I, I think is more than capable of playing in the Premier League. Um, another highlight I'd like to pick out is Mike Lobafemi getting the goal because he had become a bit of the, the forgotten man. And it was kind of a typical... Well, the kind of goals I'd expect him to score. It was a long ball from Ryan Manning, as you said. And... Uh, he went on to it with with a bit of pace and uh, a good a good finish as well. It was a consolation, but I, I think he's still potentially an option for us off the bench. Uh, maybe even if we're um, even if we're under the cosh a bit because he has a bit of pace, he can stretch teams, and maybe in the last twenty minutes or half an hour, he he can be an option. And uh, but he's still young, and there's still still a long way to go. Yeah, Bournemouth have been the, the story of the championship so far. There are quite a few points clear at the top. And Mark Travers is, the, well, he's, he's, he's nailed down the number one spot and he's playing really, really well. Uh, the only problem for him is we have two excellent goalkeepers as it is in Gavin Bazunu and Cuevin Kelleher. So if I was saying we're well stocked in defence, we're extremely well stocked in the goalkeeping department. And... Uh, and not not to mention Darren Randolph as well, um, so um, I suppose we could do with more midfielders and more and more strikers. But um, yeah, it's great great to see him do well, and and great to see Gavin Kilkenny get, get some time as well. He has been uh, he's impressed for the under twenty ones, and uh, if he keeps um, impressing in the championship because he had started well, I think he would yeah. lost his place for a little bit. And uh, good to see him come back now because he's he's one of those players. Um, he could become the next kind of Wes Houlihan or Andy Reid or cause celebre, I suppose, for one of these really good ball playing players that uh, maybe we're saying should be in the team. But maybe with with the likes of Stephen Kenny, you won't have to have the argument that oh, he's too he's too talented or too much skill. Um, which maybe was part of the problem that Wes Houlihan didn't get. He's uh, more game time than than many of us really should have got over the years, and and Andy Reid before him. And uh, but anyway, I'm going a bit off topic there. But but it, it is good to see Gavin Kilkenny uh, get some game time in. He has talent as well. And uh, Bournemouth for me, I mean, you, I kind of would have expected to see West Brom up near the top, probably like to Fulham, etc. But uh, Bournemouth, for me, have been the, the surprise package in the championship. I kind of thought when they went down out of the Premier League that we'd never see them in the Premier League again. It's uh, 
it's a lovely club. I was actually there a couple of years ago. It's a really lovely, small, atmospheric ground, but it's a bit small for the Premier League, and they are probably doing it on a on a budget that that wouldn't compare. They were they were probably survive They survived in the Premier League when nobody expected them to. And uh, it, it's not that many years ago that they were very lucky to stay in the Football League. And uh, they've had a remarkable rise through the divisions. So it would actually be great, not just from the Irish standpoint, but I'd love to see them come back up again. And if they could get promotion this year, it would be fantastic. Yeah, they've had kind of a, a roller coaster kind of couple of years ago. I think it's only really back in the, the noughties, as you said, they nearly went out of the Football League because administration problems roads all the way to the Premier League and we're, we're quite comfortable they were part of the Premier League furniture you would say there for five or six years and uh, big big pressure you've now just put on Gavin Kilkenny's shoulders to possibly put in the category of uh, <laughs> Andy Reid or Wes Houlihan but my time will only tell with that one uh, over the years I'm going to move on and I'll finish up on England because I'll just give a lowdown in League 1 and League 2 of kind of any Irish players that had involvement in games as opposed to maybe who lined out in that so in League One, James McLean scored for the second time in three games as Wigan beat AFC Wimbledon 2 0 on Saturday. Now, they also played against Lincoln on Tuesday night and they lost that game 2 1. And just the only other bit of involvement from League One, Ronan Curses and Marcus Harness both scored for Portsmouth as they drew 2 2 against Accrington Stanley. Curses actually opened the score in that game and Harness actually's goal was an, there was an injury time equaliser for Portsmouth. So that was a bit of a roller coaster match as well at home against Accrington Stanley. Um, actually, I think they could have been away. I think it might have got that one slightly mixed up. But it's Curtis's first goal in four games and his third this season. And Harness is up to five goals this season. And a little bit more involvement. Former Ireland under 21 internationals, uh, Liam Kelly, who was actually, I think, caught up to a few squads by Martin O'Neill as well, uh, scored. And Corey O'Keefe provided the assist for his goal as Rochdale bet uh, Sutton 3 2. Uh, Dubliner Neil Byrne scored an own goal but Hartlepool still came from behind to be Harrogate 3-2 on Saturday and another topsy-turvy game as well uh, Pork Armand got an assist for Extra City as they came from behind to beat Mansfield 2-1 at home on Saturday so plenty of goals and drama in League 2 I suppose the obvious thing stands out there from League 1 uh, Gary is James McLean he's made the drop down to the third tier of English football he's been in the championship for a good while I'm not sure if he ever uh, drop down to League One, but it seems to be working out for me. His Ireland performance of the last kind of couple of weeks have been, or the last couple of games have been much, much better from what we've seen over the last while. And as I said, there, like he's gotten in with a couple of assists now, two goals in three games. He's hit the ground running, running for a Wigan team that's doing quite well in League One. Yeah, no, I, I think a big thing looking from the outside is James seems to be very happy with Wigan and the fans love him. I know he. I think he made a donation as well back when he was playing with uh, Stoke or somebody when they were in financial trouble. So he's he's very well liked there. He seems. Look, he has dropped down a division, but he seems to be very happy, and he's obviously playing playing very well, as you said, scoring goals, um, creating goals, and uh, he's he's playing well for us as well. So. Um, look, I, I think it's 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 got to be a positive thing that he's gone there. He's hit the ground running, and. Uh, long may it continue it's a lot for all walks of life if you're happy where you are in, in a job or whatever you're doing you you will perform better and uh, it does seem like that James is a lot happier at Wigan now than than he was at Stoke yeah it certainly seems when his footballs reflect um, and Will Keane obviously is also the man in the goals them this year hence why he's obviously got his call up as well we move on into scotland because a little bit to get through here obviously the standout thing for scotland we might as well <clears throat> jump straight into it was Conor ronan scored a cracker for st Mirren, but it still fell short losing 2-1 at home to rangers ending their six game unbeaten run but of course it was a little bit of a scare and injury news from this one as well jamie mcgrath was stretched off with a hip injury in the second half but it is hoped that he will be back on the 6th of november saturday week for st Mirren. he missed last night's mm -hmm. game he's going to miss uh, their weekend game as well. Obviously, you see someone going off in a stretcher, you're fearing the worst, but it does look like he will be back and available for Stephen Kenny also for games later this month. Uh, Ryan Sweeney picked up a yellow card while Kidden Sheridan came on for the last 22 minutes as Dundee drew 1 1 with Hart. And Johnny Hayes was brought on for the last 30 minutes, or brought on after 30 minutes for Aberdeen and received a yellow card as they played Hibbs 1 0. Jake Doyle Hayes played 83 minutes of this contest for Hibs. Now, I know there was a full round of games in the Scottish Premiership last night, but unfortunately, I printed off my notes 
before them last night and was out this, um, last night. Kind of go through what could have happened there. Maybe Gary, if you picked up anything, you might let me know. But I, so I, I picked thing. up Johnny Hayes played very well for Aberdeen. They got a point at Ibrox. They were actually two two up, but um, they were pegged back to two two. But um, he 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 was heavily involved, particularly when they were under the cosh. Uh, near the end so he he seemed to make i didn't see any player ratings but uh he 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 seemed to have a, a big impact there um i i will go back to jamie mcgrath because that was oh I, it was gut-wrenching watching it because he actually picked up an injury about five minutes before he was stretched off and i think i think st Mern had used all their substitutes at that point and he was let on which seemed to be a mistake and then it's always a dangerous thing and then he was the victim of that bad challenge and uh i i thought he was going to be out for months it looked really bad the game was stopped for a long time and as you said he went off in a stretcher and i'm delighted to hear that i look frankly i was i didn't expect him to be available for our march games so it's great that he's potentially available for the portugal and luxembourg games and uh, that's really good news because that looked uh, a bad injury to me and they they really took their time about it so um that's great to hear that it's not as bad as as it looked on sunday um yeah so and and conor ronan's goal was absolutely out of this world what an effort great goal, yeah and uh what a shot and uh it was in the first um first minute the game had only just kicked off and uh it was an absolute rocket into the top corner and uh, a player who went I suppose he went to Slovakia, went then went to Switzerland and uh, played at, at, at a reasonable level, the top league in Slovakia, played with grasshoppers in Switzerland who are, uh, well, they were down in the second tier. They got promotion last season, but um, they're, a, they're a big club, one of the biggest clubs in Switzerland. So um, in many ways, is it a bit of a, a step down to go to go to Scotland? I would have thought maybe... Uh, someone who was highly rated when he was at Wolves, etc., just didn't get that chance. So, um, but anyway, uh, Jim Goodwin's got quite an Irish contingent there at St. Mirren. And uh, well, maybe go back to the, my James McLean example. It's great to see he's he's playing regularly, playing well, and clearly happy in himself. And uh, if he can score more goals like that, he will um, attract some attention. Uh, I did see something as well that Hibs again are being linked with Jamie McGrath in january um he, he's playing really well but um i don't know if i mean is hibs it's a bit of a step up from st Mirren, maybe but um there's potential for him to get a better move you feel yeah i would i would have thought yeah. there was potential i mean he came very close to the championship to move into the championship in the summer i think it was middlesbrough and uh i think at this point uh jamie mcgraw will be probably either one of the old firm um uh, i most likely celtic i assume but um if, if if he's staying in scotland and if not to to go to a, a decent championship club or possibly in the premier league he's become an international regular and he certainly doesn't look out of place in stephen kenny's side so um with all due respects to jim goodwin and he has done a fantastic job at st Mirren, but they're really punching above their weight as it is and that's yeah. kind of in the lower to mid table scottish premier league I think Jamie McGrath is probably he's become too good for them as well, and uh, so maybe St. Mirren fans mightn't be too happy with me saying this, but I'd, I'd certainly like to see him get a move in January, and probably somewhere with all due respects to Hibs, a bit better than Hibs as well, which, uh, well, they're a little bit better than St. Mirren. Maybe I don't know. Maybe what people maybe I'm being a bit harsh on Hibs, am I? But. Um, for me at a top championship club or ideally in the premier league or else one of the old firm yeah i kind of would echo the same views as well i think hips will be a side step up and obviously see um I, I do think kind of like when you as you said like you've seen him being linked with premier league champion moves in the summer that you kind of think like that's reason somewhere nation maybe not somewhere like Hibs where it's maybe not the full kind of big move that you kind of would have that you would describe I move on just two last bits to get through uh get through the MLS roundup uh in a moment but first we'll just go through the rest of Europe so just two pieces to get through here so Josh Golden played the full 90 minutes as Anderlecht recorded their first win in five games beating Beershot 
some name for a football team. Uh, Beershot VA 4 2 uh, home on Sunday. Uh, even though it is their first one of five games, it does extend their unbeaten run to seven games and they have climbed to one place in table to six. It's very congested still at the top of that table. There's still only five points off the leaders, Royale, Union, SG. And it was a busy week for Zach Elbazehi. First and foremost, he played a huge part in setting up the winner for AIK and a 1 0 win over Nork Coping on Sunday. He put the cross in, uh, done really well. If anyone on Twitter and Philip O'Connor's Twitter, done really well to keep the ball in play, stop him going from throwing him, puts a great cross into the six yard box. Goalkeeper doesn't deal with it. And, when the IK players smashed into the back connection. Philip O'Connor, who seems to nearly cover all his games, uh, described Sack as having a, a solid, solid showing again. That result did temporarily move them up to second in the table because Malmo drew away to Farsberg 1-1 on Sunday. So that meant they went above Malmo. And of course, they played Malmo last night in a crucial title desire. But unfortunately, they lost that game 1-0. Sack, I think, got taken off in the 70th minute of that one. So they're now three points off the lead with five games left to play in the Swedish League. Yeah, so uh, it, it, I, I was reading elsewhere on Twitter, actually, that Josh Collins' performance against Beershot, or however you pronounce it, was absolutely uh, out of this world and one of his, his best ones and really impressive, which is good to hear. I didn't actually see any of the game. And it's great to see uh, Zach Albazetti. Uh, I, I do follow Philip O'Connor as well, and there was actually a couple of other Irish people raving about about Zach as well. So it, it is great to see him uh, do so well. He was one of the standout players for Stephen Kenny's under 21s. Uh, I think we're going back to the Toulon tournament, etc. So I'm sure he'll be in uh, Stephen's thoughts as well uh, if he's if he's playing well, which he obviously is in Sweden. Um, Andrew Lecter probably, oh, from the Belgian. I know you're saying, what is it there? fifth or sixth they're probably the most famous name or certainly one of the top three along with bruges and, and standard standard liege so um i mean anything outside of the top three is probably poor for them but they are in a bit of a rebuilding phase but it does seem like josh cullen has become a crucial player for them and uh obviously look i, I know belgium still export a lot of their players but with the quality of players they're producing, to have somebody playing week, week, week in, week out with one of the top Belgian teams ha, ha, has got to be um, a positive sign. Yeah, I agree with you. It's Anderlecht, like they've, some, you could say it's almost any kind of fall from grace. It's, it's a long time since they won the league or challenged for the league. And even I think last year, getting back into Europe after a horrendous season prior to that was a step in the right direction. It's been an up and down journey for them. They actually, in the Conference League by Fetus Yarm and Dundalk's Conquer. So that would have been a big disappointment. I think they would definitely target group stage European football this year. And finally, uh, just to give the MLS roundup, uh, Shane O'Neill, he was involved twice over the last uh, week. He first played 82 minutes of Seattle Sounders 2-1 defeat against Sporting Kansas City. And he was also again on the losing side as he came off the last 23 minutes as they lost 3-0 to Los Angeles FC, so a bad week all around for Seattle Sanders, but they're still top of their Western Conference and looking very good for the playoffs. Derek Williams played 90 minutes as LA Galaxy came from two goals down to draw 2-2 with FC Dallas. They still remain in the Western Conference playoff spot, but I think they're just two points above the cutoff line there, so it's going to be squeaky bum time for them for the last five or six games of the regular season. And John Gallagher was brought on a late substitute as often FC recorded a Rare win beating Houston Dynamo. They, of course, are bottom of their conference table, so no hope of them making the playoffs. Derek Williams, um, do you think he could be someone that could possibly still force his way into Stephen Kenny's squad, or is them days possibly maybe behind him now? He's but not that he's old, like but I just think maybe that you know, I suppose how often is Stephen maybe going to get to look at the MLS compared to maybe other leagues? That's probably the problem. I mean, look, it was a fantastic move for him to move to California. And uh, LA Galaxy are obviously a big name. They had, well, Robbie Keane there, but like I said, David Beckham, uh, Stephen Gerrard, I think, played for them as well. Anyway, they had plenty of big names there. But um, it can be a bit of a case uh, out of sight, out of mind. I heard he's actually playing really well with them. But I, I must admit, I don't. I know, I know I have access to the MLS games. I don't tend to watch them. And uh, so I don't, I haven't, been able to watch him myself so it, it will probably be difficult for him to force himself uh particularly as well with the 
the issues around getting in and out of the US. I know the US, uh, you, you can't you can't actually go there. Now, I know it's opening up, I think, on the 8th of November. So I suppose if Stephen did want to call him into the squad next month, it would be possible. But And he's also in a position where we're well stocked. We talked about all the defenders we have playing well in the Premier League and the Championship. So I think it's going to be difficult for him to come back. But what, what a move to California for him. And uh, I know it's um, it's a lovely part of the world, and uh, LA is one of those amazing cities to to visit. I've never lived there, but certainly I've visited. And uh, fantastic weather, fantastic lifestyle, and everything. But probably difficult for him to get um, any more international recognition. Yeah, I suppose it definitely is. Just- touch on it there I think from a lifestyle point of view it's a dream move for a footballer and I think in fairness as well too Derek um, even though he's only had a handful of appearances for Ireland, I don't think he's ever really kind of had you know a bad game or really kind of done much wrong obviously the standout from what's the goal that he got against New Zealand I was going to say that's where we're going to wrap up I just realised of course I've nearly gone the whole show but of course mentioned the EFL Cup or the Carabao Cup or League Cup whatever it's called now um, obviously mixed fortunes for Irish players over the last kind of um, couple of days we've seen Shane Long did score in a shootout for Southampton with his ball bone missed in that shootout which probably proved decisive in the end as Chelsea won that game obviously people were seeing the Sky Sports cameras last night like Greg Cunningham Shane McGuire Joel Raftery playing for Preston against Liverpool Adam Brown was suspended you touched on as well they were the Brighton contingent so anything you kind of just want to, to touch on from the League Cup before we finish up Gary yeah so great to see Will Smallbone back on a football pitch I know it was a an awful penalty, but he's had that horrendous in- injury, and it's great to see him see him back. And uh, hopefully, he'll he'll get some more game time over the coming weeks. Uh, great to see Shane Long on as well. And as you say, Shane, Shane did score his penalty. Uh, Johnny McGuire missed a great chance for Preston. Yeah, uh, you might be happy about it from a Liverpool point of view, but I certainly um, I would have expected him to score. He was only about four or five yards out. Okay, the keeper did save it, but um, he really should have scored from there. And uh, great to see Aaron Connolly and uh, start for Brighton as well. Um, I didn't get to, to see any of that game. I didn't even, I just saw the goal. So I don't know, I don't know how he played or I didn't see any ratings or anything like that. But it was great to see him get some game time. And as I said, great to see Shane Duffy back again. And hopefully the, the, the Man City game was just a, a tactical thing and he'll be back uh, as a regular for Brighton again. Yeah, they have a tough one actually this weekend, Brighton up against Liverpool at Anfield. So it'll be interesting to see what Graham Potter are thinking along tactic lines again for what could be a, a tricky game against. Well, you, you probably would have to say, and I'm not being biased and saying it's probably one of the form teams in Europe at the moment in Liverpool. But that is it. I think we definitely now have it all covered from this week's edition of the Irish Abroad Show. We're going to have a bonker show yet again next week because there is double game weeks once again. I actually should mention as well, uh, Troy Parrott did get a goal as well um, in the EFL Trophy and choose night for NK Dongs as well. Should also throw that in as well. But uh, great, um, a great, a great, a great goal, a great finish actually. Yeah, um, I know it might only be against maybe Premier League sides on the train trees, but look, goal is a goal and it helped him with his confidence. But I think that definitely is all. As I touched on, we'll probably have a busier show next week with double game weeks in the. EFL but Gary thanks very much for standing for us uh, and helping us out today and no doubt we'll definitely have you on again probably even this side of Christmas never mind the rest of the season Grant cheers thanks Joe. anytime enjoyed it cheers thanks very much